All right, today we're going to be talking about upgrading the firmware on one of these Lionel legacy systems. So uh, anyhow, I think we're on version 1.61 or somewhere around that. Uh, I'll talk about that more in a second. But anyway, first off, I'll start with stuff that you're gonna need. Uh, so you need one of these writable memory modules. I think these cost like $20 or something like that. Um, I'll try to find one and link it in the uh, description. Now, from the instructions that I remember, Lionel recommended a very specific uh, USB to serial converter that was like $60 or something ridiculous like that. And I decided I wasn't going to get one of those because that's just way too much money. So I picked up the $10 cheap one and this works just fine. So I don't really know what the point of the $60 one was, but anyway, this works fine. It's about 10 bucks. This is a USB to RS-232 converter. I'll try to link this in the description as well if I can find it. Um, you obviously need the Lionel command base and your remote. You also need the uh, Y cable, which uh, came in the box with your legacy system. And we're going to be looking at the end that says serial com on it. And that's where we're going to plug in this uh, USB to serial adapter. If I get it lined up the right way anyway, that's where we're going to plug it in. So we're going to plug that in there. The other end of this will go into the computer, which you're also going to need. I've just got a laptop kind of sitting off to the side. And you're going to need some software on the computer, which you're going to see here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in now. And, oops, sorry, bumping the camera. And I'm also going to plug in the writable memory module into the back of the legacy base here. It's a little dust cover that opens up and then this will just go in the back, which the way that they have this design is kind of a pain to do because they've got that uh, cable right in the way. It's kind of hard for me to get a camera angle on this, but, uh, that's just going to go into the port on the back here. All right, so that little memory module just plugs in the port in the back right there. Just goes in with that silver circle facing up. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the computer. Okay, so over here on Lionel's website, we are going to need this Legacy System Utility version 2.0, which I actually haven't uh, tried using yet, so this might be a bit interesting. And the thing that I'm kind of confused about right now is that there are two different things in here. One of these says uh, Legacy Cab 2 and Base Software version 1.60, and then the second one down here is Legacy Cab 2 Software version 1.61. And the reason why I don't really understand that is because this one sounds like it's the update for only the remote, while this one sounds like it's for both the remote and the uh, base. So I'm not real sure about that, but we're going to go ahead and download this one. We'll have to install this software, which presumably is going to involve clicking the setup thing. And say yes to that, and it should go ahead and install this. I have no idea if the screen capture software is actually still getting this or not. Uh, we'll leave that. Clicking is it this button? There we go. It's kind of a weird, weird setup process compared to most of your modern ones. It looks kind of old and outdated, but we'll see. It says it was completed successfully, so hopefully I can get my recording software out of the way. Um, I don't see a shortcut to it though. Let's see. I know it said program files x86 and then line L, LSU. Here we go. We can go ahead and right click on that and say create a shortcut. Should be able to. Yeah. And it should put it on the desktop right there and we should be able to open that up from here. And this doesn't really look that much different from version 1.0, so this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, select method, we are going to use a serial port. And serial port is going to be, since we already have that cable plugged in, there should only be one of them, but so in this case, it's going to be COM4. We're going to say OK. And it should be able to, uh, yeah, base connected down here. 
All right, so looking at this website, which I will link into the description, we're gonna go down here, and I've already done this once, actually, because I got kind of confused about uh, these two different versions that are in here. Uh, one of them is the CAB2 only, and one of them is the base software and the CAB2 software. Um, so uh, anyway, first off, you're gonna need to download version 1.60. And it's going to take a second. We're also going to need to download this version 1.612 if we want to get the uh, remote controller up to the latest version. Uh, so we have to start with this one. And you see these. this has the file for the base 2 and the cab 2. And the uh, sort of readme document, which we'll take a look at in a minute. But we're going to click on extract and then extract all first off because this comes in a uh, zip file and this won't come up this is because I've already done this once but anyway when you do that we'll come over here we're going to say make the uh, base module we're going to do the base first and you just go and find wherever you have that folder saved to so in this case it's downloads and then it would be this one and then it'll be this bas2-v160.base2 file and we'll open that up and it will make the base module you see down here it said status connecting and then it's status writing memory module now and that will just take a little while to uh, to make it all the way across there all right then once it finished it'll come up with this module successfully written dialog you just click on ok and then we'll go to upgrading the base all right, so updating the base is a matter of unplugging the power cable. And on the bottom side here, there's a button that you use to uh, set the channels, which is right there. And what you do is you hold that button down and you plug in the, uh, you plug the power back in, which is kind of hard to do because this is in an awkward spot I'm working around the camera. But there we go. And then once the lights on the side will start flickering and this light will start flickering, then you let go of the button. And you just wait for this to uh, stop flashing and it should boot back up like normal. And if we go in here, you'll see we have version 1.60 on the base and 1.53 on the remote. So uh, anyway, next step is to make the uh, module for the remote. All right, so when it comes to making the cab modules, now I noted that there are two different files here. There's the 1.61 and the 1.60. Now, I could not go straight from version 1.6, or sorry, I could not go straight from the version that I was running, which was 1.53, straight to 1.61. I had to go to 1.60 first. So when we click on that Make a Cab module, we're going to go ahead and come in here. We're going to do uh, the Legacy, well, this folder, 7000 Legacy V160 cab 2 and base update and you'll see that it will automatically have this cab 2 file here so we're going to open that and write that module and then we're going to update the remote to version 1.6 l then we're going to do this again with version 1.61 which is that other folder which will also have to go ahead and unzip this so uh, we're going to extract these and it's going to come up with the same error again. Again, you won't have this because I've already done this once, so I'm just letting it replace the files. But uh, anyway, we're going to have to do that. Uh, this also has your manuals in it, I do believe. Yeah, instruction manuals. That you can download and look at that. And all the different versions. There's also some tutorials, which I think, some, yeah, they're videos. All right, so we got module written successfully again. We're gonna say okay to that. We're going to update our remote, and then we're going to come back and we're going to write another module for version 1.61. All right, so next step, we're going to take this module out and go ahead and put it into the top port on our CAB2 remote here. 
and then we're going to hold down the set button and turn it on and you'll see that light flash uh, rapidly here and it should once it's done just boot up like it normally would And there it goes. So now if we go under CTC here, we should be able to see we have cab version 1.6 and base version 1.6. So that is how you update these. And of course, at this point, you can remove the module from the top. All right, so now we've got our remote updated to 1.60. We're going to go ahead and make another one of these cab modules and go find the folder for this. And we're going to get version 1.61. All right, so we've got module successfully written. We're going to go ahead and repeat the same process that I used to update to 1.60 in order to update to 1.61, and then we should be set. All right, so yeah, maybe I was right about that. Uh, this time it did indeed update to version 161 there on the remote without any issues, so it probably needed to be updated to 1.60 before it could update to 1.61. So anyway, that's all up to the latest firmware. All right, so one last thing we're gonna do is if we go into these uh, folders here, that uh, just the folders that we downloaded, the zip files, we have these readme documents that we can go in and take a look at, and it should tell us uh, what the updates were. So. Uh, changes from version 1.54, it adds support for Legacy Station Sounds Diner Cars. It adds new TXIR, Transmit IR button to the custom tab of the Legacy Cab 2 display. This feature is for use with an upcoming Lionel sensor car, which allows trains to be pulled by older locomotives to work with the sensor track. Um, Allows proper CAB2 sensor track configuration of current and fu or future products with sensor track compatibility, such as subway, breakdown, B unit, freight car, station sounds, and lacy crane boom car. Train builder fix a bug where train link wasn't automatically set on accessories, passenger cars, etc. That the device's team CCID was between 1 and 9. So yeah, pretty much just a bug fix and some stuff that has to do with the new Lionel LCS system. And we've got some other important notes here that tell you that uh, you kind of have to, or depending on what version you're on, you have to do some different things. And it gives you some other stuff in here. Anyway. Yeah, and this is true. You know, it's not really any need to upgrade these unless you really want to. Or you need um, you need the features, but uh, anyhow, that's that. We can go ahead and look at the one for. Well, we'll see if there's one for the uh, 1.61 update. It's a README thing here. Uh, yeah, no legacy code or base code. What did they fix this issue with CAD2 and sensor track when used with TMCC engine? Yeah, uh, okay, so yeah, bug fixes, seems like. Yeah, so all that is bug fixes, basically. Uh, so, that uh, brings us up to speed. We'll go ahead and take a little look at the Legacy System Utility software, too. You can actually do backup and restore of your uh, Legacy database settings, which I do believe includes your engine data and your settings and everything like that. So, we can go ahead and take a look at our engine data that I have in here. Now, I have noticed some interesting bugs that seem to be happening with my uh, engine, engine data, and you'll see it right there. There's a Y with two dots over it instead of a two in front of these things, and I have no idea what that's coming from. Or it seems to happen when I'm messing with the switches on the layout with the Cab 2 remote, and I'm going back and forth between the switches and the engines. It seems to randomly stick that weird character and as the front thing in the road or the road number so anyway that gives you your uh gives you the engine name the road number locomotive type control it lets you t change the uh, touch screen icons those spare ones that are kind of 
down toward the bottom of that screen. You see this is set to the ditch lights in rule 17. And after we make changes, we can save changes to the base. Now I haven't actually tried to use this together, but you can make these multi-engine modules and actually write a bunch of data to those uh, black memory modules. And you can make a engine memory module for just one. Uh, we can look at this one, and this, again, this one has that weird character in front of it. So we're going to go ahead and fix that, save changes to the base. That one doesn't have it. That one doesn't have it. This one does. This is 8444. And actually, I think I can set this to ditch lights as well. SD90 Mac, that one's good, that one's good, that one's good, that one's good, and that's all of them actually. We have train data, which uh, I probably need to clear a bunch of them actually, because I don't have anything set up right now. I'm not sure what we're going to come up with here. Uh, Power Master... Yep, that's right. Is that all I have? Show active trains only if I turn that off. How many do I get? All of them. So if you click down here, it'll give you the info on the different engines that you have. And I don't even remember setting this up. That's five engine lash up. And I don't remember doing this at all. There's no way to clear it, apparently. So it's train four. That's actually got one in it. But a bunch of these have... Yeah, there was one, 18. I don't see any way to uh, clear these though, so I don't know. I guess that show active trains only button is kind of useful. Except now I, yeah, there we go. Uh, accessory data, probably don't really have much for that. Actually, probably don't have anything for that. Yeah, this have names on them. That uh, switch data. Can you name the switches? I wonder. I don't think so. I guess you can name the switches. That's interesting. I didn't know you could do that. Uh, we have route data as well. There's not gonna be anything in that. There shouldn't be anything in that because I don't have any routes set up. You, know, you can add. Apparently, you can set them up from here. And base data, presumably, yeah, railroad name, route throw rate, and base revision. So, yeah, that's not a whole lot. Anyway, that's about all there is to this software and updating the legacy base and the legacy remote. So, anyway, that's it for now, guys. Bye.